morning. Um, please tell your classmates they have to come on time. Um, almost half the class is not here yet. They trickle in. Um, what's going to happen is if people don't come on time, then I'm going to have to wait, and then we're going to have to go after the hour. So if I have to wait 10 minutes for people to come, then we go 10 minutes beyond the hour, and that's going to interfere with your next class. So uh, it's your friend, it's your classmates' fault if we don't start on time. Okay, um, in the last hour, at the end of the last hour, um, we had a problem that we were working on. And the problem was we have a CSDR with no reaction. So a pretty boring CSDR. It'll get more interesting as we go along. And um, what we're given is that for T less than zero, CA in is constant. And since there's no reaction, and it, uh, since it's a steady state, then CA in is the same as CA out for T less than zero, because there's no reaction. Uh, but then we're told that at T equals zero, there's a step change from CA T less than zero to CA in T greater than zero. And we would like to calculate the transient of how the output changes with time. And in particular, there was a specific question which said, sorry, it's a little warm here, but just have to deal with two layers of shirts. Uh, and we were asked to find the time where the difference between the actual concentration and the inlet concentration um, is, um, actually this is CFT minus CFT less than zero, is 90% of what it's going to end up being. Um, so we're at, if this is one, if this is 100%, then we're asking at what time T star is this 90%. That's what we're asking. And we found that the equation for this reaction, reactor is the CADT, the CSDR with no reaction, plus CA over tau is equal to CA in for T greater than zero over tau. Uh, this was the equation that we came up with. And we uh, derived, we said that this is a first order linear differential equation, and then we derive the solution for that. Um, and uh, this is subject to CA for uh, T less, less than zero is equal to CA in of T less than zero. So that's the initial condition, that T equals zero. So the initial condition is this. That was the initial condition. We want to see how it varies from here up to its value at infinity. So one thing we can do is we can calculate the steady state concentration. At steady state, that is, T goes to infinity, then dCA dT equals zero, in which case I have CA of infinity over tau is CA in at T greater than zero over tau. From here, the tau's cancel, and we get that CA infinity is CA in at T greater than zero, which we knew. So then the, the final solution here is the same as this. Just as the initial here was the same as this. So that's no big surprise. We knew that just physically it had to be the same because there's no reaction. So if there's no reaction, eventually uh, what, goes, what comes out is the same as what goes in. So this is a first order linear differential equation, and we solved it specifically for this case. What I'd like to do is give it, uh, come up with a general solution, um, and then we'll specify it for this case. Last time we did it directly for this case. Um, so let's look at a simple equation, the x dt plus a of t x is equal to b of t. So this is a little bit more general, because notice in this, in our case, CA is, uh, X is CA, and little a, a is just one over tau, it's a constant. It's not dependent on time. Here I'm going to allow it to depend on time. And here I have CA in at T equals zero, T greater than zero, which is a constant. 
divided by tau. So this is in, independent of time, but here I'm going to allow it to depend on time. So this is the more general case. And you know, we specify, make it um, specific for this case when a and b are constants. So uh, again, what we need to do is we need to use an integrating factor. And the integrating factor here is e to the integral to t a of s dx. site blackboard. So the video is for the explanations, and then you really want to look at those pictures to get sharp pictures of the blackboard, because the video is not going to give you a sharp picture of the blackboard. Okay, so once I have this, this is a total derivative, so I can integrate it, so I can multiply both sides by dt. Cancel here. And now this is a total integral, so uh, I integrate this, and I get e to the t a of s Yes, x of t minus its value at zero, because I'm integrating from zero to t. So actually, why don't I put that into row here? Zero to t, and this is t prime now. And this one I integrate from zero to t, so these become t primes. Um, okay. So I evaluate this, so this is d of that. So the integral of the d of that is just that. And this is evaluated at t minus evaluated at zero. The integral from zero to zero is just zero. So e to the zero is one. So here I have x of zero. And that's equal to the integral from zero to t, e of t prime, e to the integral of zero to t, a of s ds, dt prime. Now, since I don't know b, I can't do this integral in general. But what I can do is I can write that x of t is equal to x of 0 e to the minus integral from 0 to t a of s ds plus e to the minus 0 to t a of s ds integral from 0 to t b of t prime e to the integral 0 to t prime a of s ds so this is the most general solution I can get whenever A and B both depend on time, when they're not constants. Now we can specialize this when A and B are constants. Well, if A is just a constant, then I can, uh, it's not a function of S, I can pull this out of the integral, it's just a constant, and then the integral just becomes t. And then I get x of t is equal to x of 0. Uh, times e to the minus a t plus e to the minus a t integral 
B, uh, well, let's do the second note. B is constant, B comes out. And uh, if this is the integral of AT, the integral of AT gives me E to the AT times 1 over A. So I have B over A. Um, and that will just give me E to the AT minus 1. So when I, so E to the AT minus 1, which uh, just gives me X of P is equal to X of 0, E to the minus AT plus B over A. Uh, 1 minus e to the minus a p. But I would like to make this slightly more general. Now, who said, who said that things have to start at zero? Sometimes I have a series of processes. One that might go from zero to t1, another one from t1 to t2, another one from t2 to t3. So I really don't need to start at zero. I could just start at t1. So all of these, I'm now going to start at t1 instead of at zero. I go from t1 to t, from some fixed time. So in that case, this becomes t1. This becomes t1. And this becomes t1. And this becomes t1. Similarly, this now becomes t1. T1, T1, uh, T1, and T1. So I just replaced the zeros by T1s because the event may have happened at T1, not at zero. And similarly here, I can have a T1. And then when I do this integral, I get A times T minus T1. T minus T1. T minus T1. And this now again becomes t1, t minus t1, and t minus t1. Are there any questions on that? This is sort of the general solution. And we're, instead of going through the details of deriving the solution every time we have a first order linear differential equation, we're just going to plug into one of these boxed equations. Okay, let's get back to the equation that we started with. I think we're really going to have to start uh, making a fuss about attendance because there are only 11 people here. Okay. Um, I know there's a problem with the train right now, so that's why people are coming. There's a problem with the train? Yeah, they texted in the group chat. They texted in the group chat. Okay. All right, well, um, it's a good thing we're recording the lecture. Okay, so let's plug in. We already did this explicitly, but let's just plug in. Let's notice that for this case, for star, for star, okay, so let's see if anyone's paying attention. When I compare this equation with this equation, what's A? What's A? Yeah? One over tau. One over tau. And what's B? Somebody else? I'll call on people if you don't. Uh, you're supposed to listen in class, not be a secretary. That's why we're recording it. If you can't listen and write, then listen. Because it's all on the recording and you'll have pictures of this. What's B? Okay, I'll count to three and then I'll call on people. One, two, three. Yeah. So B is C A A and T greater than zero over tau. So now I can just plug right in, and these are both independent of T. So I can plug directly into here. And by the way, uh, since the event happens at T1 equals zero, I can note that T1 equals zero. So that tells me that C A, and of course, X is equal to C A. So I have C A of T is equal to CA of 0, e to the minus T1 is 0, and A is tau, 1 over tau, plus B over A. B over A is just CA and T greater than 0, times 1 minus e to the minus T over tau. So here, rather than rederiving it, we have it 
just by following from this equation right here. And to rewrite this in a slightly more interesting form, since I'm interested in CA minus CA in a T less than zero, which is CA of zero. CA of zero is equal to CA at T less than zero. So I'm going to subtract CA of zero. So if I take CA of P minus CA of zero, that's equal to, if I subtract the CA of zero, then I have an e to the minus t over tau minus one here. And here I have a one minus e to the minus t over tau. So I can factor out the one minus e to the minus t over tau. And notice that this gives me CA in at t greater than zero minus CA of zero. Let's make that a little bigger. So when I subtract CA of zero, I get this uh, e to the minus t over tau minus one. So that's minus one times one minus e to the minus t over tau. So I just get it, it looks like this. And that allows me that, uh, to, well, to uh, make a plot to see what this looks like. The first thing I can see is that CA of t minus C of zero, this is CA of t, and this is CA of zero. So I'm looking at the uh, amount above this height. And what I can see is that it's equal to CA in a t greater than zero minus CA of zero. That's this difference times one minus e to the minus t over tau. As t goes to infinity, this becomes zero, and it tells me that this difference is equal to this difference as t goes to infinity. And how does it get there? It gets there as one minus an exponential. Well, an exponential goes like this, minus an exponential goes like this, just turning it upside down. And then I just add one. So this curve right here is one is the exponential, one minus e to the minus t over tau. And now you can see, remember I told you last time, I think you had asked, you had said, is tau what we call the space time? We said that tau, remember, is the volume over the volume of the flow rate. We said that that thing, it's the amount of time needed to replace one reactor's full of fluid by flow. I said that's the more relevant concept than resonance time. And you could see, because it's the time constant of the exponential. It's tau, not the resonance time. It's the time constant of the exponential of how this thing changes. So clearly that's the relevant time scale because it's the relevant for the dynamics. Okay, and now let's answer our question. Uh, well, actually, before we answer our question, let's notice something else. We can uh, note, we can write something which we call the uh, KP, there's a name for that, steady state gain, the steady state gain. And KP is defined as, the way you write defined as is a colon followed by an equal sign. It's a definition. It's CA out as T goes to infinity minus CA of zero divided by CA out at T equals zero, uh, zero minus Let's just, um, yeah, about CA in at t greater than zero minus CA of zero. So let's see what that is. Well, that's this thing divided by this thing, because CA is equal to CA out. And at t goes to infinity, the exponential goes to zero e to the minus infinity, so this is just one here. So the steady state gain, the difference between the output and the input at infinity, my, divided by the difference between the output and the input at zero, is just equal to, is just equal to one here. And that's because there's no reaction. Now let's answer our question. Our question says, when is this guy 90% of this guy? That's the question, when is that 90% of this guy? 
this guy is 90% of this guy when 0 0.9 is equal to 1 minus e to the minus t star over tau. So I'm going to add this to both sides and subtract this from both sides. So I have 0 0.1 is equal to e to the minus t star over tau. Because 1 minus 0.9 is 0.1, and this just comes to the other side of the equation. And now when I uh, take e to the plus t star over tau, so I take 1 over this is equal to 1 over that is 10. So I have the t star is equal to tau times the log of 10, whatever that comes out to be. Tau is given in the problem, and you can calculate the log of 10. Any questions on that? plug flow reactor, it could be something to do with temperature. So that's why I'm emphasizing the definition of the word out. For a CSDR, CA at where the variable is the concentration, CA out is CA. Yeah? Loud. Loud. So I, I call this T star because it's a particular value of T. So if you remember over here, find the T star such that. A colon by itself is, is shorthand for such that. It's shorthand for such that. Uh, a colon with an equal sign is definition. So that's just sort of standard notation. Now, uh, now I, let's say we've done this, we've come up with the solution. And what's the next step? Remember, we're talking about the general way of doing modeling here, of doing modeling. So we said when you start out doing modeling, you define what's given and, what's, uh, and what you have to find. You, look at, you um, look at all the data that you have, the constants, in this case, the data or C into less than zero, C into greater than zero. Um, you make certain, you look at how many variables there are. Well, the variables are CA here, and in principle, there's also a variable which is the volume of the reactor. But is the reactor full or is it not full? Then, so we have two variables, and then in principle, we need two equations. One for CA, here CA, um, uh, and actually the other one was the other equation was the volume is constant, the, tank, the reactor is full. So if the volume is constant, then this is the equation for CA. So with the volume constant, that becomes a trivial equation, and I'm only down to one unknown, CA, and one reaction. So the degrees of freedom are zero. Once I have that, I solve the equation together. Now to define the problem, I not only need the equation, I also need the initial condition because it's a differential equation. In order for it to be well posed, if I have one derivative, I need one condition on T. Now I solve the equation. Here's the solution. And here we studied the solution, we plotted the solution. And the next thing we do is we compare the solution with data, if we have any data. Um, and we can see, does it fit the data? That is this the right time that it took? If it does, great. If it doesn't, then we may have to change our model. There might be something wrong with our model. So for example, let's say it took a shorter amount of time to actually happen. You got to 90% much quicker. Well, one reason that could happen is maybe I got the volume of the reactor wrong. Maybe the volume, maybe part of the reactor is not, we assume the CSTR. If we assume the CSTR, we assume the entire volume is well mixed. 
Well, let's say part of the reactor doesn't mix, that only part of the volume is well mixed, and then there's a stagnant zone here. Then the effective volume of the reactor might be smaller than what I thought it was, because only a small part of the, only a part of the reactor is being well mixed. If the reactor is effectively smaller than I think it is, then that tells me that the effective tau will be smaller because the volume I chose was too large. If tau is smaller, then T star will be smaller and it'll happen faster. So um, those are, by examining comparison data, you can see how good your assumptions were and how good your model is. Let's say on the other hand, instead of it taking shorter time, it takes a longer time. It takes a longer time. So then I have to figure out what could possibly be wrong with my system, with my model. And that one, uh, if it takes longer, then we have to think a little bit more. Uh, so I'm not gonna suggest any reasons for that. The obvious case was smaller. Now, um, well, one way is if it takes longer, then maybe there's a leak in the system and all the fluid is not going through the reactor. So it takes longer because my flow rate, my flow rate is smaller than, entering the reactor is smaller than I thought. I thought it was higher. Let's say it's leaking, uh, so it's not all going in the reactor. If the flow rate is smaller than I think it is, then tau will be bigger and it'll take longer. So those are possibilities. Now, um, notice here where we made a model, we solved it, and now we're comparing the results with data. When we compare with data, if the data don't agree, there's something wrong. If the data do agree, well, phew, that's great. But there was, uh, but I'm still waiting for the next experiment. Just because the one experiment that I did agrees with the data doesn't mean that all experiments will agree with the data. The problem is, this equation, the solution, makes predictions for an infinite number of experiments. I can only do a finite number of experiments. I could try an infinite number of CAMs. I could look at an infinite number of times. That's what the model predicts. But I can only do a finite number of experiments. So when that led Karl Popper, a famous philosopher of science about 100 years ago, to note that in science, uh, we have two kinds of theories. The ones that have been proven wrong already, even one experiment that it doesn't uh, explain, it can explain 100 experiments, but if the 101st experiment it doesn't explain, then the theory's wrong. So uh, there are two kinds of theories, the kind that have already been proven wrong and the ones that are still hanging. We can never prove a theory correct because we can never do an infinite number of experiments. So a, a perfect example of that is, that sounds sort of trivial, but a perfect example of that is Newtonian mechanics. When Isaac Newton uh, proposed the second law, of, uh, Newton's second law, it worked great for thousands and thousands of experiments for well over 100 years. And people thought, perfect, Newton's a genius. Newton was a genius. But um, eventually, People started doing have the experimental techniques got good enough that people were able to do experiments. For example, um, according to Newtonian mechanics, you know the Earth rotates, the Sun is not rotating. So when the when you're on the part of the Earth going towards the Sun, then the time that you take for light to travel from the Earth to the Sun and back should be slightly faster than if you're on the part of the Earth turning away from the sun. And in the 19th century, people couldn't measure that difference. It was a far too difficult, far too, measurement techniques were far too inaccurate. But right around the turn of the 20th century, the techniques got good enough where that you could actually measure that difference and they found there was no difference. The amount of time it took for light to travel from the Earth to the sun and back, or why don't we say just from the sun to the Earth, the amount of time it took to travel from the sun to the earth was the same whether you were going towards the sun or away from the sun. That is, there wasn't a correction due to the velocity of the rotation of the earth. 
And that led uh, Lorentz to come up with the famous Lorentz equations, which were then interpreted by Einstein in his theory of special relativity, which said that the velocity of light, which said that Newton was wrong, in that his Newtonian mechanics works great for thousands and hundreds of thousands of experiments, but when you get to velocities on the order of the speed of light, it no longer works. So that's a perfect example of a theory that was hanging, people thought was great for well over 100 years, nearly 200 years, and then the theory, and then we found that there were, there was a range of validity in certain places it doesn't work. So that's an example uh, that Karl Popper uh, points to. Are there any questions on that? Or on anything we've done so far? Questions? Okay, well, let's do a problem that's slightly more interesting. Where instead of having no reaction, we're going to have a CSDR with a reaction. And here the reaction A goes to B with rate constant K. And they give us a value K is 0.04. And uh, what else? I don't remember, I'm not going to memorize the numbers here. Um, so again, C A in versus K is going from C A in T less than zero a in t greater than zero. This is given. And of course, ca out is going to do something. I assume it was steady state for t less than zero. That's exactly what I'm going to get to. Now, perfect. And there was an audience. I told them to ask that question because that's exactly the one I wanted to answer. Now. Perfect. Um, you read my mind. Um, so the obvious question to ask is: Well, if I start at 0.925, that's higher than 0.85. So aren't I going to kill the catalyst right away? Well, the difference is, unlike this case, I have a reaction. So CA comes in at 0.925, but it's reacting, so it goes down. So even though this is 0.925, this is much less than 0.925, because this is K is 0.04 and tau is 24.7. And of course, we need to verify that. So uh, why don't we go through and do that? Other questions? OK, I guess the train is wrong. The, uh, there's a famous line, something has landed. I think when the uh, lunar module in Apollo 11 landed on the moon, they said the something has landed. I don't remember. So it's something, the train has landed. It's, it's one of those famous quotes. Okay, so let's uh, look what's going on here. 
Uh, here I'm going to assume, again, what this is given, is that the reactor volume is fixed. The reactor is full, so the volume is fixed. And the same, and V is fixed. So therefore, tau is fixed. So now let's go through, what are, what are, what's the unknown here? What's the only unknown? I'll call on people if there aren't going to be. Remember, your, uh, your job here is to listen and learn, not to be a secretary. I think they have a secretarial school downtown, if you just want to copy. But here you want to be engineers where you have to think. Again, everything I say is recorded, and everything on the blackboard, is you're going to have a photo of it. So, as I said last time, if you can't write, if you want to, if you can write and think at the same time, great. If you can't do both at the same time, then think and write later. Wait, one thing at a time. What is the only unknown here? Concentration of A L. C A. So the unknown. Is CSTR. And in this case, uh, to your question, because it's a CSTR, CA here is the same as CA here. But this is CA here. Because it's a, a CSTR, by assumption, CA out and CA are the same. That's only because if it satisfies the assumptions of the CSTR. Okay. And since we're given that this is the the uh, reaction rate, uh, appropriate to your question, why don't we also give it that the rate is KCA. That is, it's just a first order reaction, and that's why uh, you have K in the rate constant is 0.04, um, and it's 0.04 per, per unit time, so let's say per second. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, uh, and we also have an equation. Our equation is the reactor equation. So I have one unknown, one equation. My degrees of freedom is the number of unknowns minus the number of equations. So it's equal one minus one is zero. And if you remember the reactor equation for constant at constant density, At some point, we'll write out the reactor equation for non-constant density, but this is constant density. Dca is equal to Ca in minus Ca over tau plus the rate of production of A. So this is the general equation. The rate of production. Now, note, uh, now notice every term in this equation is units of moles of A per unit volume time. Those are the units. Moles of A per unit time, uh, I'm sorry, moles of A per unit volume, time. RA is not the same units. In this case, A is not being produced, it's being destroyed, so it's negative. So this is CAA minus CA over the tower minus KCA, because A is being destroyed, not produced. This is the rate of production of A. And so therefore it's minus. And we can immediately see the units of K. Moles A per unit volume time. This is moles per unit volume. K is units one over time. And that's why I wrote it as 0.04 per second. Really? Okay, so now because we have this general formulation for any first order linear differential equation, let's get it in this form. So in that case, I want to bring all the CAs to the other side of the equation, because notice all the X's are on the left, there are no X's on the right. So I have a CA here, and I have a CA here, and I want to bring them to the other side of the equation. So I have DCA plus, this came with a minus and this came with a minus. So now I want to take plus A, plus 1 over tau, CA is equal to, you know, to the left, CA in over tau. Is that clear? And 
now what I want to do is I want to call this thing 1 over t. Because there's inverse time units where 1 over t is equal to k plus 1 over tau. Is 1 plus k tau over tau. So that tells me t is tau over 1 plus k tau. So there's some new time constant in this problem, t, that is not tau. Tau is the flow, has to do with the flow, but it's a combination of flow and reaction. Because it's got k for reaction and tau for flow. And I want you to notice that k is a positive number, tau is a positive number. So this is less than tau, because the denominator is greater than 1. What is going on here? What's going on? If you remember, in the case where I had no reaction, the time constant of how the concentration changed in the reaction was based only on the flow. It changed based on how long it took to replace one reactor's uh, volume of fluid by virtue of flow. But now the way the concentration changes from input to output depends not only on the flow, but also on the reaction. The reaction should make that change faster because it's in addition to the flow. And I can see that it does. The time constant is faster. Well, now I have a, this equation. It looks just like this equation did. Except there's a t here instead of a tau. But otherwise, they look exactly the same. So I'm going to use this equation now, where again, x is Ca, t1 is 0. And what's A? What's A here when I compare this equation and this equation? What is A? Do I have to call on people? 1 over t. 1 over t. But it's 1 over t. Before, it was 1 over tau. But now it's 1 over t. And what's b? What's b? Someone else. Rina? It doesn't matter if you get it wrong. I just want you to participate. Just try it. C over tau. C over tau. Good. Very good. See? If you have the guts to try, you might also get it right. Okay, so let's now plug into this equation. I have CA of T is equal to CA of T1, T1 is 0, CA of 0, times E to the minus T over B T, because it's E to the minus A T plus B over A. B over A is now C A in times T over tau times 1 minus T to the minus T over B. And let's see what T over tau is. T over tau, T over, uh, T over tau is 1 over 1 plus K T. So this is now 1 over 1 plus k tau. And uh, actually, what I, why don't I just write this way? This thing is 1 over 1 plus k tau. And uh, let's rewrite, let's uh, write that, write this ca of t minus ca of 0, just as we told you before. Let's subtract ca 0 from both sides. So that way I'll have e to the minus t over t minus 1, and I'll be able to factor it out. So that will 1 minus e to the minus t over t. And here I have ca of 0, uh, ca in over 1 plus k tau minus ca of 0. Well, let's see what ca of 0 was so before, before we start analyzing. CA of 0 was steady state here. 
was its steady state. Times t over tau. Times 1 minus t to the minus t over t. And let's see what t over tau is. t over tau, t over t over tau is 1 over 1 plus kt. So this is now 1 over 1 plus k tau. And uh, actually, what I, why don't I just write this way? This thing is 1 over 1 plus k tau. And uh, let's rewrite, let's uh, write that, write this ca of t minus ca of 0, just as what we did before. Let's subtract ca 0 from both sides. So that way I'll have e to the minus e over t minus 1, and I'll be able to factor it out. So that will 1 minus e to the minus e over t. And here I have ca of 0, uh, ca in over 1 plus k tau minus ca of 0. Well, let's see what ca of 0 was so before, before we start analyzing. CA of 0 was steady state here. Was it steady state? The out was the same. The out was the same as the in at steady state before t equals 0, and at infinity the out the end was zero. So therefore, delta out of the delta in was just 1 at infinity. Here, because there's a reaction, the output is different from the input. So we can see how much different is it at infinity Delta out over delta in, so you say a is less than 1. It's 1 over 1 plus k tau. So now let's put some numbers in. If I put some numbers in, really to address Etienne's question. So uh, let's notice that this thing, if I look at the numbers here, ca in for t less than 0 was 0 0.925. Remember that was this guy, 0 0.925. And now it's multiplied over 1, 1 over 1 plus k tau. 0.04 times tau, which you said is 24.7. And this thing, if you multiply it out, which I'm not going to do in my head, um, gives us, where are we? There's a number. Which is um, C out. So C out of T 
goes at t equals zero, c a at t equals zero is the same, point nine two five. CAP minus CA of zero. CA out of zero was this. So that was 0.925 times 0.5. And that thing is equal to CA in, so it's two times 0.925 minus one times 0.925. Divided by 1 plus k power, 1 plus 0.04 times 24.7 times 1 minus e to the minus t star divided by t. And t, we said, is tau over 1 plus k power. So t is tau over 1 plus k power is 24.7 over 1 plus 0.04 times 24.7. Whatever that number is, this is t. So the only unknown is t star. So I can solve for t star, which obviously I'm not going to do right now, because that's just the merit. And what would the react, you know, let's say you're in charge of a plant. You're the boss. And you don't want to kill your catalyst. So the alarm goes off at 0.83. And you know that if you don't do anything, it's going to keep on rising and get to 0.85 and kill the catalyst. What do you do? What are you going to do? I'm, I'm glad you raised your hand. I would like everyone. The point of the matter is I want everyone to participate. You don't have to get the answer right. But when you go to work in industry and you graduate, and you go to work in industry, you're going to need to speak up. If you don't speak up, you'll get fired. Your boss is going to ask you questions. I don't care if you get it right or wrong in class. I only care if you get it right or wrong on the exam. But I want you to get used to speaking up. Again, you can get it wrong. It doesn't matter. But you need to get the courage to speak. So if you don't raise your hand, I'm going to call on you anyway. So what are you going to do if this if uh, the alarm goes off? What do you do? Throttle CA. CA. Which CA? Yeah. How? What's the throttle mean? Turn the valve. Turn the valve down. So what I would yes, what I would do, what you would do, what we were told to do is. Well, CA in is too high. If CA in is too high, it's going to keep on going up. So maybe what I should do once the uh, once the alarm goes off is get some colored chalk. Always useful. So here's T star. T star, and at T star. Well. Now I'm going to lower this again. Either to 0.95 or something smaller. Because if I lower it, then this will stop going up. Well, if I lower it, the same equation is going to hold. I just have different numbers. So now uh, what's going to happen is the new CA in is going to be lower than the old CA in. Because I just went down. So this is the new one minus the old one is going to be negative. So negative means I'm going to have an exponential minus one, which is going to be an exponential decay. So that says I expect the solution to look like this, where this again depends on t. Because it's again e to the minus little t over big t. The difference is this solution doesn't begin at zero. It begins at T star. So the new solution, let's do it in P, C A of T, and this is for T greater than T star, minus C A of T star, because this is starting at T star. Again, it's directly from here. This is C A for T in, for T greater than T star. I have to write on a separate line. 
same equation. It's the exact same equation. The only difference is my initial condition changed. It changed at t star from Ca in at t between 0 and t star to Ca in greater than t star. Is that clear what's going on here? Clear or unclear? Or super clear? What's the lambda on the bottom right corner? Lambda? I don't see lambda. Next to the big fraction, right to the right of 1 plus. So well, that's times. Oh, okay. Fine, because I ran out of space. So I need to go to the next, the next one. Are there any questions? By the way, now you can see why it's critical that I put the t star here. And this should have been. It's critical that I went from t1 to t, and not from 0 to t, because sometimes t1 is not 0. Here I have the first change happen at 0, the second change happen at t star. I can use the same equation, because I went it's t minus t1. In this case, t1 is t star. Are there any questions on that? I'm sorry? Okay. Yes. This curve rises quicker and falls quicker because the time constant in the exponential is a smaller number. Because t, the capital T, the time constant in the exponential, is tau over 1 plus k tau, which is smaller than tau. So it's a shorter amount of time. The rise time is fatly shorter when I have t. And the reason for that is because I not only have flow change in the concentration, I also have reaction. So they're, it's a conspiracy. They're conspiring together to make the changes happen faster. Other questions? Okay, so why don't we go on to the next problem then. Questions? Three. Or three. Now let's uh, I have now let's have two CSPRs in series.
What are the unknowns? As I said many times, your job here is to listen and to understand, and if you don't understand something, ask me before I ask you. If you wait until I ask you, that's not a good idea. Yes, ma'am? Um, what are the unknowns? Where? Which, what are the variables? The concentration of A in what spot in the system? In the back? CA2 and maybe also CA1. So my unknowns are CA1 and CA2. I don't know them, that's why it's right here on Blackboard. It's just reading. And now I have reactor equations. The same equation that I had before applies here. Except I have DCA1 DT is equal to CA1 in, CA in minus CA1 over tau1. Because each reactor may have a different tau. Minus KCA1. Subject to CA1 and T equals zero is its steady state. And we know what that means. We know its steady state means that it was CA in over one plus K tau. We know that from here. And here I have DCA, and this is CA in T light, T greater than zero. And DCA two PT is equal to CA in. What is coming into reactor two? What is coming into reactor two? CA1. CA1. So this one is CA1. Big difference. Let's make that in pink.